How's it going guys? Hope you're doing. Welcome to a brand new video tutorial from IPNOS on your lovely channel. So after I don't know, quite some time since I've uploaded my last video tutorial, I'm not sure what that's about this guys because you know the website has been down, there has been some troubles and we've been trying actually to move on into another dedicated VPS server for build performance and for you know like upcoming things for upgrading the website and capabilities and all the different things. Uh, as well as like we are actually intending to make the channel way much more better upload day daily and constantly content brand new content and obviously we're going to do uh like brand new changes to the ipnews.com uh website so make sure to stay tuned and you know push that subscribe button for any news you would probably think of so let's just move on into our today's video tutorial topic so we're going to talk about what is uh like you know testing and how you test your javascript applications so we have been like you know a developer javascript but you like you're new to, to the field and you have like never uh, been able to you know deploy your application into a real uh, word live thing or just like you haven't been able to create your first application and deploy or something like this you probably don't really know what is testing and why is testing is so so important as developing your application you've bought you've got actually to test your application after finishing the application to make sure that it's free of bugs and it's like working as expected to be and as developed to be working so testing is one of the most important things to have as a skill because you know as if trying to you know go through your career or to have a job in the industry or something like this uh, if for testing you've got to get the testing skill like how to use testing all the testing uh, you know tools uh, you tools available out there and how to test your JavaScript application especially JavaScript because it's a little bit tricky and it has a lot of frameworks so you've got to know what is you actually doing so we're going to jump in into Jest so Jest is a JavaScript utility uh, or a delightful JavaScript testing tool or a library whatever you can call it uh, it helps you a lot to test your own JavaScript applications not only not JavaScript you can move on even to TypeScript application flow types application or react application which we'll cover later on on another video on this particular testing series because we're going to cover a lot of things in here but for now just go ahead and like you know try to do a unit testing on a javascript and for the testing purposes there's like a couple of things you need to cover uh, like a couple of categories you've got to put yourself on so there's unit testing there's integration testing and there's like end-to-end Testing. So yeah, completely different things. We're gonna talk more and more about them. But for just you know today's video tour, just in the basic, try to set up things and we just try to you know do some tests on a unit basic testing. So this is the Jest tool. Jest is made from Facebook. It's an open source uh, tool. You can probably see in the bottom feature in here. Uh, it's been used by big companies like Airbnb, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and plenty of other. You know, teams and companies use just for testing their own applications, testing new features, and so on and so forth. So it's super, super lightweight. It also can be able to do mocking. It can, it can like work with TypeScript, as I've said before. Uh, it has a lot, a lot of features. You will discover it with us. So if you're still like doubting why testing is so important, I feel that once I started testing, uh, you know, I feel like why testing is that I can just go ahead and release my application, but still testing is super, super important. So going ahead and jumping into our Visual Studio Code projects in here. So go ahead and like and open the projects in here. It's like, you know, an empty project it doesn't really have that much of things. There's an app.js in it. Oh, uh, look completely empty uh, we've got an SRC in here which has a couple of things in here we're gonna talk about it a little bit the package.json in here you should probably know how to set up a Node.js application and to like create a package.json initialize it and all the different things uh, it's a basic package.json and we have got to install a Jest so you need to install as a normal JavaScript modular as you do with npm so just run an npm install Jest and make sure to save it as development dependency because Jest only you all probably just need Jest for uh, you know local purposes just for development purposes because you're going to test your application before the release or before deploying it into like a web server or something like this so we just save it as a dev wait for it to install and there you go you are actually ready to go so this way you've got to install a simple stack so it's very very lightful for a thing and it's very lightweight so it doesn't really take that much of time 
Um, now we've got in here, it's into the application folder, I've got utils folder, and unit testing is basically means testing a single unit of your application. So you say you have like a really big uh, web application, for example, and it has a lot of parts, it has like a login part, it has a registration part, it has a forum, it has a plenty of other places actually. But what you've got to do with unit testing is actually test each part alone. So you can't actually test them all together, like they, they can function all together at the same time. No, you just pick one part and start testing it and see how it actually works and react to a specific inputs and see uh, where are the ex and, you know, ex exceptions and bugs and you try to fix them and so on and so forth. So this is how unit testing actually works, just picking up one thing, one part of your application and trying to give it a test. So this is got like an index.js end of the utils, which basically means it's a global variable in here. So I've got two functions. So this is a is URL function, which checks basically using a regular expression if a given URL, we're giving it is you know, on the arguments pretty much, is an actual uh, URL. So it's a value or not, it has an HTTP protocol or not, and so on and so forth. So it just like basically uh, tells if a URL or not, it returns true or false a boolean basically. And the other function is concatenates objects. So you give it objects one, object two, and it returns a brand new object, a mutated object, or like a, an immutable object. So it's just a brand new version of your object, brand new instance of the object in here, and just like concatenates and merge object two with objects one. So anything on objects one is going to be merged with objects two, and so on and so forth. So it basically is where it does using the object assign method in here. It's very really simple. So if just like you know try to put both of these functions just for giving you a shot and why it's super, super important for you guys to understand what is doing it and why it's so important for the testing and how it actually basically works. So here and how, how, how we're actually going to put our test files. So testing basically we're going to create like script files that will automate the process for us whenever we try to run some scripts using Jest. So there we go, for unit testing, what you've got to need to do on each part, let's say this is like a utils part of your application, you have other parts, uh, another folder in here, um, you know, like your application is composed of several parts or something like this, you've got another component in there, you need to put for unit testing each part alone, each test file on a specific part you are actually targeting or testing. So here under the utils, what we've got to do is just go to the new folder, create a new folder basically, and we're going to just go ahead and call this test. And as you can clearly see here, how I'm naming the folder is a little bit specific. So I'm giving it a low dash or underscore, two underscores before, and appending two underscores at the end. So to tell it um, that this is a specific test folder. A lot of people, a lot of people use this naming convention for easier reading and for knowing that this is a testing uh, folder. It has test specific tests uh, with a specific tool or something like this. So whatever tool you're using, this is what you've got to find. So if you've been like using or taking a look on a GitHub project before, for, uh, you've got like to, to see, I don't know, test folder like this with the underscore at the end of the beginning, you should, you should probably understand it before, but for now, you will probably need to know that this is a testing folder and you will actually understand this later on when you try to read another source code or something like this. So here you go, you've got a new feature actually for you guys. So this is for the testing, uh, let's go ahead and just try to create something for it. Um, and this testing, I'm just going to go ahead and test uh, utils. I'm going to just, you know, do utils.test.js and make sure it's completely seen here, a name in a convention, another name in a convention to use a dot test or append dot test on each file. So this I'm naming it the same as the other thing as, as the util function I'm trying to test in here. Give it dots test and the dot JavaScript, obviously since a JavaScript uh, file in here. Simple enough. So this is what we've got to do. This is the naming conventions you've got to do. Now for Jest, it has a specific things. If you try to go back into uh, the Jest website and you try to go into the getting started here, just to see what's happening. So as you can clearly see how to test things. So this is a test file. You require a function, whatever function you have in here. Uh, if you're a class, function, a variable, whatever. It's in, the, in our case, we have a function too. And you just use the test the Jest API. So with Jest API, you don't really need to require any library or call it or import it or something like this. No, Jest, whenever you try to run that, it's going to supply everything you need to, to the compiler so you can use all these functions and you know methods and all different things. So you don't really need to worry about anything else rather than just you know putting your things into the file and start testing with it. 
So we've got a test in here. It tells it a test, you know, adding this text in here, uh, this string thing a, for better documentation. So like, you know, imagine this as a comment. So it tells it or it tells you what this test is about and what is it doing. So it adds one plus two to equal three. Uh, what does it test? And here for it expects, using expects function, expects this function to return three and to be uh, three. So this is the basic API. I'm gonna use a describe method in here or a function. Describe method basically wraps up multiple tests. So this is it. So I'm um, just gonna go ahead like, you know, testing um, utils just for better knowing what we're actually doing and for telling people, all the people who are trying to either working on your same team or you actually distributing this as an open source or something for all the people to read your code, be able to understand what we're actually doing uh, in here and why it's super, super actually important for you to, to put these kind of things in here. So here we're gonna describe what we're doing. So we're testing utils. Now for the describe, as I've told you before, it takes a multiple test. So we just like, you know, a civil test inside of this describe function. And each test represent, um, you know, a specific test. Since here we have two functions, we're gonna test each function separately. And this is called a unit testing, as I've told you before. So we're gonna do a unit testing in here. We're gonna test uh, each URL. So I'm gonna just do URL rejects uh, validation just for letting people know because when we run the test in here the terminal it just like you know it uses this to tell you which test is running in which test uh, has been failed or is succeeded and why and so on and so forth so you can you know distinguish between one test and another and know what actually behind the scenes is working and what is happening in all the different bugs and here you just you know everything it takes a callback in here it takes this thing and the first thing is a string the second thing a callback to execute as you already know. So it's a callback or you can just put in a function using in here an error function to make it much, much simpler for you guys. And here what we're gonna do, let me just go ahead and like and use um, a test URL. I'm gonna create a new variable. You can take it like, you know, a normal thing, but in this case, you're actually testing your application. So you have got to supply some inputs to see what is actually happening behind the scenes. I'm just gonna try with this one, HTTPS, I'm gonna put this URL in here. I'm gonna try google.com. So I'm gonna test against this particular value. And I'm gonna use our function, but we're not gonna use it simply. I'm gonna use the expect method in here or expect function. So expect, you, you give it some value, you give it some return value, then you check against another value. So here, we've got to use the is URL, but as you know, we haven't imported that yet, so we've got to go all the way up uh, on our model, and we've got to require this. And make sure to use require, not use ESX syntax or something like this, because just works with Node.js and all different things, so it doesn't really know about that. Uh, things like the import, you've got to use Webpack to transpile or compile things up, but just use the basic things for these kind of things. I'm just gonna like name this utils equals require. Uh, so we've got to require this really quick. And I'm gonna, um, so I've got to go back once. I'm gonna go to the index and index probably is gonna clear this in here. I'm gonna use exports and it exports like two methods. So it, this is gonna be a global object for it. And here we go. So this expects, I'm gonna now use utils dots. I'm gonna access the is URL method, which, you know, supply it with a URL. I'm gonna give it just this URL in here. And now we have got to use the methods. So it expects returns a just methods uh, list in here. So you've got all of these methods to test against, but you, you can't actually use all of them. You only use the method that matches your specific scenario. So what is our specific scenario? So if we can take a look on the is URL, you pick a definition in here to so clearly see for the definition is is url checks against this specific url but it only returns a boolean which means either true or false so we've got to check if this is true or false and since here what we what we actually expect from this one to return since we have supplied a valid url so you've got to know what is this what you are actually your inputs and what is the uh, expected and unexpected output from your specific application. So we've got in here, since we've supplied like HTTPS, forward slash with a dot and everything, google.com, this should be a valid URL. So if it doesn't like return true, that we should know that you know, there is some bug, there is some error uh, issue with our application, we've got to go ahead and fix it. But for this one, it should be a true. So we're gonna use the to be truthy method or the to be truthy function here. The to be truthy, it only checks uh, for this value, the return value from utils is URL to be true. Otherwise, if it doesn't return true, 
then it's just like you know just gonna tell us it, it fails the test is actually failing and you've got to fix that there's uh, some bug uh, or kind of a bug on our application i'm gonna just use another expect in here i'm gonna put it like details again i'm gonna use the is url and i'm gonna put rather than putting um the valid url that we've put it up here i'm gonna put an invalid url for the invalid url i'm just gonna put like htc just like this i'm gonna put one one single forward slash i'm gonna also put uh facebook Com. So this shouldn't be like you know uh, a valid URL or something, and you're going to go ahead and to check it, or you know to expect to be truthy, which means it just like returns a true. If otherwise, it just like throws. And this one we expect it to return a true, and we'll see if it, or do we expect actually to return false. And this one should fail. All the text should fail, and we will see actually how it works. I'm just gonna like you know, see you or let you know guys how test failing is actually happening behind the scenes. So now we go ahead and control S, saving that. And to run the test, we've got to go into the pack.json and put in test in there. So here, I've already done this. So going to the scripts section, the script section to add a new script, you've got a test script in here and add in just dash dash watch all. So make sure to, to do the watch all uh, flag to make sure that Jest is gonna watch for your files and run like a loop or, or always like you know watching and testing your files so whenever you do any changes to this file control s or you go ahead to file and save that you probably just like you're gonna let's uh just rerun or restart the actual test and retest your application and re rerun the actual test script in here so this is all you've got to need to do and also make sure to go ahead and pick up a terminal if you're not running visual studio code you can go ahead and use cmd if you're on windows or mac os x terminal or linux terminal if you're on other uh, thing but here I'm using the integrated terminal you can go ahead and grab it from terminal new terminal and there you go so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and like do npm run test as we have added the test into the bag.json so for the testing actually it might take some time because you know it, it tries to simulate a real world application like you're running it using node.js or your browser so it tries to take some time and test it against all the things it gives you this like really nice progress bar to know what is actually happening it gives to the time, uh, it gives you the tests, which tests are running, and the, the more important thing is which files are actually testing. So here you've got to give it uh, which files are basically being tested. So here we try to clearly see this. Let me just go ahead and like you know expand this a little bit for you guys to see what is actually happening. And if we try to see it first, we've got URL rejects validation. So we've got to see that, and we've got before this testing your utils. So you testing utils, it's the described thing that we have added. So this shows you the roadmap of your testing API. So it gives us like, you know, testing utils. The second thing give us URL rejects validation. We've got testing utils, URL rejects validation. So it takes like a tree thing. This is the, the first described bit, it's appearance and the other child of it, it's specific test and where it's actually failing. So it's failing there expect receive it to be truthy and received false so expects this this output in here or input in here specifically to the expect function to be true but otherwise it received a false uh, value so it's a really and it shows you in here where it actually happened so it happened in here exactly in here or this one actually in facebook but the other one you know gone successfully this one hasn't been failed or something like this so the test in this particular case has has gone success with no problems and it shows you where this one has gone you know failed you can control link uh, or control click to know where it is and this is the watch you can run the watch and you can do whatever in here and if we try to go ahead and do let me just go and comment this one and control s to so clearly see after just control s it just like reruns everything and wait for it a little bit and here we've got like pass the test pass on utils.test.javascript this is the script we are running in here and we are rejects validation into the testing utils on um, the describe in here is actually passing with no problems so there you go you've got you've got yourself a test a quick thing uh, with no problem nothing at all so to be true thing to be whatever thing you can also have another test in here uh, let me just show you what's actually happening i'm just going to put inside the describe i copied and pasted in here so you can clearly see what's happening here we've got the first objects with the name alex uh, with a career with web development and name another name only in age 27 so we've got expect utils 
to concatenate two objects and we've got two empty objects in here to be to, to actually equal empty and we see if it is actually going to return an empty thing or if there is any box and the other hand we've got here uh, utils concatenate objects so we've, we put it into the expects function and we use the method to have a property so to have property it checks if the specific objects in here inside this expects function which is going to be returned by the concatenate objects method uh, if it does have this specific property we name it in here. In this case, it won't because we just like concatenate this one with, with the objects one, uh, which none of them has actually the job property inside of this properties list. So it just like returns, uh, it shouldn't be there. So this will fail and this will pass. So we can clearly see that. Let me just go in and control S, save it, and this is gonna run again. And we get, we've got in here to like, you know, a test with object concatenation inside the testing utils uh, with the describe function. And there we go. So the first one, you can clearly tell a first test has been gone. So each test is a separate from another. So if you really need to run uh, a unit test for a specific, a more deliver for a specific function, you've got to run it uh, separately. So we've got the first test, the second test, and the second test actually is failing, and it doesn't actually know for the second one in here uh, if a job doesn't exist in here while to have a nested property job, but it doesn't, so it fails specifically for this one. So yeah, that was actually, guys, for this test, try to you know visualize it and try to give you an idea of what testing is and why it's super super important. It, it reveals bug like underneath bug and it tries to test your application and it's very very important to test your application before any deployment, any I don't know assignments for going live for I don't know for a client giving them here's a project or something like that. So you have got to test each application or every code you run. So that was actually guys hope you guys have enjoyed this video story. Make sure to like you know push this thumbs up. Uh, subscribe why not uh, that would be really really cool for me and i'll catch you all guys hopefully in another video tutorial so see you all guys in the next one